Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar of the month. Today we're talking about top email marketing strategies to drive more business in 2022. So let's get started. So today we're going to talk about the importance of email marketing, fundamentals of email marketing, top trends in email marketing, and getting started in email marketing. So this has been a trend in itself. So Knowing what to expect and how customer preferences will change in the coming months gives brands a huge advantage over their competitors. And I like to tell a lot of the designers that we work with of all the marketing methods that are available, email marketing is one of the best, most cost effective ways to market your business. A lot of designers don't do this. A lot of designers are remodelers, but this is one of the best ways in terms of cost and time because it does not take a lot of cost and it's minimal time. If you do one email newsletter a month, that may take you about a half hour to an hour of your time to uh, produce the content for it and then organize it in a way that you can get it out to your audience. But we're going to talk about a few tips and we have a larger uh, webinar or session on this that I'll talk about at the end. Okay. So the importance of email marketing, like I just talked about, low cost. Uh, you don't have to worry about large printing costs, SEO, PPC costs. That I mean, costs are minimum compared to other marketing channels. You just want to make sure that you have a paid email provider and not the free version. And I'm going to talk about why in a minute. Audience engagement of all of the marketing methods out there. This is one where you can directly talk to the client efficiently and fast if you know the right ways to do so. You could deliver targeted messages to your audience that will resonate with them. And that's all about targeting your audience the right way. You can drive revenues. If you are doing email marketing the right way, you can consistently see sales in your email. And I'll hand you an example of a client that we had in just a minute. And you can reach a global audience with how you segment the emails to reach different industries or factors, uh, whether that be existing clients, prospects, manufacturers, other designers, news media, whatever. So you can segment the emails to that to reach a global audience and also back to drive revenue as well. So some of the fundamentals, you want to check your analytics. This is one of the reasons why I want to say you want to make sure that you have a paid version and not a free version. A lot of the free versions of the popular mail email marketing platforms out there like MailChimp and AWeber and the such, they have the free versions, but you want to make sure that you have the paid versions because you get access to the analytics and you can see what's happening on the back end and the analytics really tell you what's working and what's not working and how you can optimize appropriately. You want to also segment your list. Now at the start, this is daunting. So I'll say, don't worry about segmenting your list until you have an appropriate list. And we could talk about that. A few hundred to a thousand is really where you want to start to segment the list. But at the start, when you're building up the list, uh, you don't have to worry about segmenting the list at the start. But over time, segmenting the list is really the power of email marketing. Okay. You want to communicate with your audience. I say this all the time. If you ever heard me speak, knowing your audience is where you want to start. So you want to really hone in on who your client is, on, on who your target audience is and communicate to them. Because the best emails that we've seen, the best email marketing that we've seen is when you really tailor it to your target market. And jargon. This is also why you want to know your audience, because if you're talking to designers, if all of your emails are to designers or remodelers, then the jargon is OK. But if you are doing emails for either end users, clients or prospects, you want to watch the terminology that you use because it may either go over their head or you may lose it. So use jargon sparingly, depending on the audience that you're trying to get out to. Okay. So these are just some of the trends. Personalization. Okay. One of the issues, and I was on a talk earlier today where we had talked about having a lot of emails and getting through to your end user or your customer, your client, prospect, whoever it may be, 
and not being just another email, but being one that they really want to look at. One of the ways you can do that is personalizing the email. And you may say, if I if I personalize emails, go take a lot of time. No, that's all about going back to knowing your audience. Once you know your audience and you have really targeted and know who your target market is, now you can develop an email and develop the content the content in the email that re- resonates with that audience. So just for an example, we, we have a design client that we've been working with for a while. We have been working on their marketing for a couple of years. And about two years ago, we had took over their emails. One of the reasons that they were not emailing, this is a award-winning designer. She did emails for a long time and she was adamant about email does not work. She said she tried a whole different way. She had did email for about eight to eight to 10 months. Open rates went down. Nobody was really reading it. No subscribers, no sales, anything. So when we took a look at it, one of the things that we found is that she is an, she is an, an, an award winning designer, but a lot of the email was about her. It was not about the end user and what they wanted to hear. So when we took it over, we really went into the 80-20 rule. And I actually have a training on this where we get into the detail of how you can do this, which I'll share at the end. But we went into the 80-20 rule, 80% value, 20% self-promotion, where we made most of the email about the end user and what they wanted to learn about, read about, know about. And then the 20% was self uh, promotion on what her offering was, but that 20% tied back to that 80% of value. And so that is all about knowing your audience and personalizing it, personalizing the email to your end user. So they really want to look for what you got to say, because we send out our emails once a month. We have segmented our list. So we have an email for our clients. We have an email for uh, designers and prospects. We have email for the industry and we have email for just marketing. And so a lot of the designers that that we hear from and I hear from often is that they're happy to receive our emails. We're one of the emails that they open regularly because we personalize it to that audience what they want to know about. And so they're more apt to open that email. So just some stats on this. 72% of consumers prefer that they interact with emails that are specifically targeted to them. And this is why we say personalization is key. And so once you know the audience, you can personalize the email. So when you personalize the email, you have higher click through rates and you get revenue on the back end. And that same client that I was talking about, once we took over their email, their, honestly, their email subscribers went down dramatically. And she was frantic about that. And I was, and I told her to calm down. That's good because now we're writing for your direct audience, for your target audience. So you are going to lose people that are not in that audience that are not interested in the email. So once we really directed that email and we targeted it, we personalized it, her email list grew by the exact people that were looking to get this email. Her open rates went up. And after about six to seven months, she had her first sale on the email. Every month for six months congruently after that, she had a sale on every email. Now, this may not be typical, it may, but for her, it worked because we really targeted the audience. We really wrote content that they wanted to hear. And we tied any of the self-promotion or the offering to that 80%. And then she had sales. And so now she she sends out email uh, on her own and and we had taught her team how to do this. And they do this uh, religiously, consistently, and they are getting sales. It may not be every month, but it but she is getting consistent sales. And honestly, it's not always from the from the user that's opening the email. A lot of the times we've heard is that the sale came from somebody that opened the email and saw the offering and. It, it was just being top of mind. They either had a neighbor or a coworker that needed what they had to offer, but they were opening the emails because they were consistent and it was about value that they wanted to hear. About, okay. So another trend is automation. This is about making sure that you have the right email marketing tool. There's a lot of tools out there. What's that? MailChimp is the 
most well-known one. That That's one of the ones out there. You have AWeber, you have Constant Contact, you have, I mean, there's a lot of email service providers out there, but you want to make sure to choose the one that aligns with what your end goal is. And a lot of them have automation, but a lot of that is at the pay version, not the free version. So th this is why I say a lot of the automation and the triggers and the if and then and the segmentations of the list happens at the paid version, not the free version. So this is why I say you want to get the paid version. Most of the email providers, you're spending in anywhere between 20 and 30 a month, just depending on the size of your list. It could be lower than that. It could be a little higher than that. But the power of it is the, the offering of the automation and also the analytics, which you want to get access to to show what you're doing right and wrong. Okay, and there's a lot of AI tools, like I said, there's a lot of them out there, but list segmentation is the most powerful aspect of that. And what, what that is, is about segmenting the list into different areas. Like I had talked about how we have different email lists, one for our own clients, one for our prospects, one for designers. We have one for manufacturers, whatever that we deal with. And so segmenting the list allows you to be able to customize and personalize it to that audience where they're more apt to open it. Whereas opposed to if you have all of the audience at one, if you have your clients, your, your prospects, uh, other designers, industry professionals, if you have them all in one, because you may be working with real estate agents or architects that are your referral partners. And if you glump all of them into one pool and try to write for them, aspects of that audience is, is not going to resonate. So, so being able to segment the list once the list is big enough and personalize it helps you automate that process. And there's a lot of email drip campaigns and touch points that the AI that you can, that, that you can work with your email service provider and do if then uh, segments and, and the AI aspect to send out to uh, depending on what happens. And there, like I said, there, there's a training we have on where we get into all the technical this. I'm just being high level right now. So the next trend you want to look at is user generated content. So UGC. So this is content in terms of reviews, testimonial. You may have a certain countertop or a certain flooring that you use or a certain a certain appliance or that that you use in a lot of the designs that you do. There may be reviews on that from the users that you may want to incorporate into your emails. OK, there. And so that because if you're hearing and one of the sites that we talk about is answer that gives you insight into what people are typing in. So what they want to hear about. So you can use that website to uh, find out what are some user generated content that you could produce. So what are the typical questions that are being asked around the appliances that you actually spec for your designs or what's the flooring, the countertops, the FF&E furniture fixture and equipment, uh, the cabinetry? What are the typical questions that they ask or the manufacturers that they want to know about? That's content that your end user if you've identified them the right way, want to know about, and you could create content that they want to uh, hear and know more about that causes them to open your email. So just some of the um, sites that you can use. So you can use reviews and these are just some examples of how you can also craft your message. So all these sites, OmniSend, Touchpoint, Test Subject, these are all sites that are, they have a free and a paid version. You can use the free version to start to help you organize the content, help you organize it away, and they'll give you scores and suggestions on what you're saying or what you can say to have better open rates or to get uh, people to click on certain things. And, and the, these are tools, like I said, to start, you can use the free version, but as you get more into segmenting the list, you want to get the paid version. Like you want to get the paid uh, version of your email serv service provider, whichever one you use, because you get access to more tools that can really help you unlock getting uh, people to open your emails and click on certain links and buy at the end of the day. OK. Interactive emails are really a uh, lost art. 
that a lot of designers do not use. And as they say, as, as we have this stat here, uh, interactive emails create two times more conversations than passive content. So that's just sending out the email, not really having in there any, any, any type of questions or anything like that. So we have a few examples here. So on the emails, you can have surveys, polls, you can have quizzes, you can have questions, slideshows or whatever to actually ask. A lot of the time that I had talked about this earlier to a design group that I was talking about, a lot of designers I talk to and we work with, when we ask them if they do email marketing, when was the last time you actually asked your audience what if they're getting value out of the email? Just a simple question. Not even not even sending just the email, but just sending to your list a simple question. Are you getting value or what would you like to see that we're not generating in in the monthly news or whatever? But just asking simple questions will open up your audience to start to engage. more, And you may find that you may have some some individuals that are opening your emails that are not really getting value. But they're just opening them either because they like you, they've either, they've either worked with you in the past or they like you and want to support you. But by asking the question and they're able to respond, you may get answers to some of the things that may be able to add. You may be able to add into the email that now gets them to open it and engage with you more. And now they can start to know, like, and trust you even more and possibly buy from you as well. Okay. Newsletter campaigns. These are, um, this is the core. Cool. So this, this is most, when we, when we talk about email marketing, most of the time it's an email newsletter. That, that I would say over 80 to 90% when we talk about email marketing is it, it's uh, email newsletters. Now there are other, other email types that you can see in where it's, it's sales or whatever, but what we're talking about normally here for designers is the email newsletter because that's the basis of where most designers start on the email marketing. So you can send it weekly or monthly. I would say to start, send monthly because that's less on your time. Once you get into it and once you begin the segment lists, you can actually start to reach out to the different segmented lists to see and ask them, like, how often are you opening this? And you can see all this from uh, the analytics as well. But asking the question to engage your audience about when are they wanting to receive this? Is this too much? Is this too little? So you may find, and I, I've actually had a designer that we work with that found that they were doing a monthly newsletter, but their audience wanted to receive it by bi monthly. So they want to receive it every other week. Because it was so much value that they wanted to. And actually, once that started to happen, their email open rates went up and their click through rates for the links that they had in the email newsletter went up and they start to have more sales. But they wouldn't have never known that if they hadn't just asked a question. It's just as simple as asking a question. OK. And make sure the email is not sales. And so that that if. You remember when I had talked earlier about the designer that we worked with, one of the reasons that her open rates went down and everybody was unsubscribing is because it was two sales. Like I said, she was an award winning designer and it was all about her, all about her products, all about her designs and, and all about what she can do for you as opposed to knowing what the audience wants and providing what they want to hear and know about and then uh, providing content for them. And so with that 80-20 rule, if you're providing content that they want to know more about, and then the 20% relates directly to that 80%, now it's not sales. Now it's just that you're presenting information that they really want to know, and you're offering a solution with that 20%. So with the 80%, it's the value, but then the 20% is, is, is the possible solution to what the problem is, because you want to, at the end of the day, be a solution provider. And with the email, if you're using the 80-20 rule the right way, you're providing valuable information that they want to know about. And the 20% is just a solution to that problem. And then that way it's not salesy and they're more apt to buy. Mobile accessibility. Over 54.8% open your email on their smartphone. Now, 
search in terms of search is, is over 80 percent, actually 90 percent. That's where search start. But emails, a lot of them start on a mobile device as well. So you want to make sure that your email, however you send it, newsletter, however, reads correctly on a mobile device. So make sure too, and then we, we have some tips on this also, but make sure the format is utilizing the mobile device in the right way. Some of the things, and a lot of the providers, especially on the paid side, they, they have an option where you can see how it looks on a mobile device. So you want to make it easy to read. You do not want to have long paragraphs of information. You want to break it up as best you can, have bullets in there, have a lot of imagery. So you want to break up the, the content or that so it's not just a lot of long reading passages because that will turn people off. So if you can break that up with short sentences, bullet points, imagery, information that engage them as opposed to just a lot of text, then they're more apt to, to open it, read it, share it. Often used is the dark mode. And this is what we uh, are talking about here is the dark mode is, you know, a lot of people are reading messages and emails at night. And so if you can make sure that your email reads well on in the dark mode, that also helps out, you know, so being mindful. And a lot of this is actually applied through your email service provider, through the ones you use. A lot of this, they have options for this on, on their paid version. That's why I said that. That's why I always reach back to the paid version as opposed to the free version, because you get a lot more options on the paid version, along with the analytics and all, but you get a, a lot more options on how you can construct the email. So it's, user-friendly and readable to everybody, okay? A-B testing is something else that you, you want to do. As you grow your email list, this becomes more and more vital as you segment the list and A-B test what works and what does not. A lot of tools out there that you can use like SiteSpec, A-B Tasty. We use a few of these. A lot of these have free tools and, and pay. But what you want to make sure of is that you are A-B testing the subject line. This is really valuable information once you start to segment the list. So you could do a test campaign where you may send off to, if you have a, a list of 100, you may send it off to 10 with one subject line and 10 with the other subject line just to test to see which one has an open or has, which one has a higher open rate or just to test to see the images and, uh, and the content, which one causes more clicks to happen, engagement to happen. And like I said, this is more advanced. Once you really start to build up the email list and segment the list, you really want to try a lot of A-B testing. But at the start, just send the email and just make sure you're using a site to test your subject line. So what's in the subject line? Is it a preferably, is it go, go to spam or anything like that? Privacy is important. With the GDPR that's in the European version, they really made having privacy an issue. So you have to ensure that you are following all of the AM spam laws, that you have information that they can opt out and then we have some some of this on here, but you you want to ensure that they can where they can opt out, where you have your information there, where if they need to contact you, they know how to do so. Making sure that they've opted into your list the right way. If somebody has said that they can that you can add them to their email list, make sure that you send them that when you add them on that you send them an email just confirming that they are because a lot of times they may say yes. And then if you send out every month, you may have, they may have said yes, right when you sent out another email newsletter. And then a whole month has passed and you send something to them and they're like, I don't remember opting into this. And then they may say that spam. So just, just making sure that you have like the double opt-ins that you have a request so they can click to ensure that they are on your email list, that you're not spamming them. This is all privacy information that you want to make sure because the higher spam scores you have, the harder it will be for that domain to get into inboxes. So one of the clients we had, one of their email issues is that they didn't know. And there are sites that you can check. And we actually have a training on this. Like I said, I'll, I'll share it at the end. But there are sites that you can check 
to see if your domain name has been flagged. So if you have sent out a lot of emails and it's either been checked as spam or there's been a lot of bounce rates or, you know, a lot of people have gotten off your email list, you may have a domain that has been flagged to other email providers as a spam domain. So no matter how many emails you send off, it just may automatically head to spam or just may not get delivered as all, at all. So knowing that will help you out too. So if you have a new domain or if you haven't ever sent emails out before at this scale, then you shouldn't have that issue. But if you have had this before and you have had some issues with either the email hitting the spam or open rates, that may be an issue that you have to look into. OK, and then using chat bots, we had talked about this in another webinar. Also, using a chat bot on your website can also help you get people onto your email list as well. And there are ways if you look at the webinar we did on how to optimize your website. I believe that was either in March or April. We had talked about chat bots and how to get people on there and onto your email list. So I won't get into all of that here, all right? So you wanna start by understanding your why. You want to ask these questions. What are you trying to achieve by the email? Who are, who are your recipients? Knowing your target audience, knowing who your audience is and the metrics. This is about knowing what the metrics are. How are they opening the email? When are they opening? What time of day? What day they're opening your email? How often are they, are they staying on your email? What are they clicking on in your email? All of these are metrics that you want to know because this helps you optimize for the future so you can get higher open rates, more click through, and hopefully more sales, okay? You want to choose a, a reliable email service provider. There's a lot of them out there. But check because each of the email service providers out there have different features. So one may be more opt to uh, help you out where if you want to add video into your emails, one may be if you want to add more imagery. So just check with them because most of the pricings are almost the same. So like I said, once you get to the paid version, which you should be on the paid version, will be anywhere between 15 and 15 and about 25 a month. And that depends on your email list size. So start, you're going to probably be around 15 to 20 a month, just, just for just for the pay version. As you add more subscribers, it's going to go up on how many, on how big your list is. But check with each of the providers. These are just a, a few of the mainstream here, but there's a lot that we don't have on here. But just check with the providers to see what the features are, what the costs are. And based on your audience, what will resonate best with your audience and choose the provider based on that information. You want to develop your email list to really get the power of email marketing. Eventually, you want to curate and you want to segment the list. So it's uh, your current clients, past clients. And so you can personalize the messages. And then you want to get uh, people onto your list. You want to offer on your website, offer either free packages or free information or information to get them to give you their email address. Because there's, like we had talked about earlier, there's a lot of emails out there and I'm sure you get a lot of emails with that. So you have to, a lot of the times you have to incentivize people why to join your email list and what are you going to provide? List out, let them know, like, this is what you're going to get from my email. And if it's valuable to them, more than likely they will, okay? And always have an uh, opt-in on your website so they can uh, get in. You can do ads, but you know, for any new email, if, if you're doing email for the first time, doing ads or that may not be uh, where you want to start, okay? Understanding the legal requirements, like I said, all of the laws, knowing cam spam, and that's really about having opt-outs, if they have found that they're not interested anymore, have a way in every email where they can opt out, where they can either unsubscribe or just say stop or something. Having a double opt-in to ensure that they are wanting to be on your email list. And by having a, a welcome email, it's simple and it's easy. And most of the email providers that we have on there, MailChimp, Constant Contact, have this option where once they sign in to or once they sign up for your email, just where you can have a welcome email that goes out immediately 
after they sign up to say, welcome to our email and list out what is the value they're going to get. So they know, OK, now that you're on my email list, this is what you can expect to receive every month or however, whatever that that consistency is, whatever that's every other week, every week, how, how, however long you have it. But list out what they're going to get. So it's reminding them, OK, this is why I joined your emails. This is and this is the information I want to know. Like I said, this was just a high level overview of email and how to really get the most out of it. We actually have an NKBA. CEU is an hour long training on what to send, how to send it, how often we actually get into more of the details on that. And you can either head to this website here, you can scan the code here to get access to that. And if you are an NKBA member, this is uh, a CEU approved. So you can get some information on that too. And feel free to reach out to us, contact us. We are here to help. My team, uh, we have a lot of clients that we work with in, in the design and remodel space, and we either do their email marketing for them or they consult with us or they send out the email and we offer suggestions and all that. And so next month, we're going to talk about podcast. So a lot of designers have been asking me about how do you start a podcast? As you may or may not know, we have our own podcast called Designer Discussions that comes out every Thursday. But we have been asked from a lot of our listeners that are designers that want to start their own podcast. What do you do? What type of you know equipment do you need? How much time should I allocate? What? How should I have the format? Whether it's just me talking, whether I have guests on and interviewing on our podcast of Designer Discussions. I actually host it with Miriam and Maria. Miriam, she's a PR professional. Maria, she's a practicing interior designer, and she also has an app for interior designers. So they are my co-host on the podcast. So they're going to be on next month to talk about podcasting and what you need to do, uh, the whole process, how much time you need to allocate, the cost associated, how to really market it. And so we're going to talk about all that next month. We're happy that you were able to join us today. Feel free to reach out. Like I said, if you have any questions. And we hope to see you all next month on our webinar of the month. And again, feel free to reach out and have a good rest of your day and a good week. And we hope to see you all here next month. All right. Have a good one.